Good morning, good afternoon, and good evening to wherever you are in the world. My name is Andrew Glazer, and today I would like to teach you how to balance the equation of potassium hydroxide plus sulfuric acid yields potassium sulfate plus water. All right, so the first thing I'm going to do is place in these little hash marks or these little underlines to the left of each particular molecule. That's going to represent the locations of my coefficients I'm going to plug in. Then after that, I want to keep in mind the main idea. So remember that the number of atoms of each element I have on the left-hand side has to balance the number of atoms of each element I have on the right-hand side. After that, then I just start picking it off. I just start chipping away at it, working from left to right. So in other words, I'm going to look at potassium. I'm going to notice that I have one potassium on the left, and it's only in this one compound on the left. I love to balance those things first. And then I notice potassium is here in the potassium sulfate compound, but I have two of them. Okay, so in order to balance the potassium, what you have to do is you have to place a coefficient of two in front of the potassium hydroxide there. The reason being is because now you have two potassium hydroxides. You got two of them. So how many potassiums do you have in total? We got one K there, one K there. So you got two Ks, right? And how about here? Well, you have two Ks, right? You only have one molecule of the potassium sulfate, but inside of that potassium sulfate, you have one, uh, excuse me, two potassiums. So hopefully that makes sense. So they are balanced. Next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to move on to now hydroxide. I actually don't move on to oxygen. I know hydroxide is a polyatomic ion. It's just from much practice, but you should definitely become familiar with your polyatomic ions. Okay, you want to actually kind of memorize some of them. It'll help you out in balancing. So what I look to do is I look to keep this thing together. I'm looking at it as hydroxide, and I'm looking to balance hydroxide on the right, but I really don't see hydroxide, right? And that's I'm going to skip it for now. Just don't break it up yet. Just skip it. Let's see what happens, okay? So the next thing I'm going to move on to then is the hydrogen, right? Uh, and what I realized that though I'm probably going to skip hydrogen because hydrogen exists in two compounds on the left-hand side. I don't want to work with that. I'm going to save that for the end, okay? The next thing then I see is another polyatomic ion, sulfur. And I'm going to work with this because I only have sulfur uh, in that one molecule on the left and I only have sulfur in this one molecule on the right. And I realize that I have one sulfur here, and I also have one sulfur there. Uh, so we have one sulfur everywhere, right? Well, two sulfurs everywhere, I guess, maybe. I don't know. Anyway, they're balanced. Now I'm going to go back and try to balance the oxygen and the hydrogen. See, now, the nice part about this is that the, high, the oxygen here is balanced already with this oxygen. So what that means now is that the oxygen that's coming from the potassium hydroxide has to be balanced with this oxygen over there. See, if, if, if you don't keep this as, uh, as sulfate, it's like you got oxygen now in four compounds, right? And it's kind of hard to figure out where to place that uh, coefficient if, if need be. But now what I've done is I basically realized that this oxygen has to balance with that particular oxygen because I've already balanced the sulfates, right? So now it's very simple. The oxygen, and I'm going to skip hydrogen still because hydrogen's really in two compounds on the left, all right? Whereas this oxygen technically is only in one on the left and one on the right because I viewed it as sulfur, uh, as sulfate, okay, balancing sulfate. So how many oxygens do you have now? Now, once you place in the coefficient, you have to take it into account. So in other words, you have two potassium hydroxides, so in total you should have two oxygens. How many oxygens do you have in the water molecule? Well, you only have one. So what do you have to place here? You got to place a two, right? So let's place in a two. Okay, so that should balance the oxygen. Now let's go back and check the hydrogens, okay? Because there's nothing left but the hydrogen. So now, how many hydrogen do you have here in total? Remember, you got two hydrogens in total there. How many hydrogens in this compound? You have two in total there. How many hydrogen in this compound? Well, you got zero. And how many now here? Well, you got two hydrogens in one water, but you got two waters. So you got four in total. And is this math equation correct? Does four equal four? And I think it does. And guess what? That means we're done. Guys, thanks so very much for tuning in. I really do appreciate it. You can follow this process. Very simple, several steps. Just very, very straightforward. Keep practicing, okay? And by the way, we have literally hundreds of <laughs> balancing problems just for you. And we have thousands of other questions out there, not only in chemistry, but physics and mathematics as well. So if you want to learn how to do problems, learn how to become a great problem solver, I think our channel is pretty good at that. All right. So check us out. We'll see you soon.